grace, peace, and mercy to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, Savior, and friend. So a few, a few announcements, uh, the sort of time-sensitive ones. This Wednesday, 7 p.m., we'll have our first Lenten Vespers, right? So we'll be doing that throughout the whole season of Lent. And then also, next Sunday at 3 o'clock, myself and two other representatives of the congregation will be going to our district meeting. So uh, just know that we're going to be, you know, connoitering with the larger church. Um, then uh, a few other th things of note. Um, the, let's see, Lenten Challenge. So if you've not received a, a sheet explaining the Lenten Challenge or a coloring sheet to fill out already, there are, I believe, eight of them still sitting over here, so feel free to pick them up on the way out. Now you might remember the three things that I'm challenging folks to do during Lent are have God conversations. In fact, Julian had one this morning. So whenever we have God conversations, we move the, the marble from one, one receptacle to the other. Uh, secondly, encouraging folk to read your Bible, either deeply or widely. And then thirdly, I'm encouraging everybody to discern your calling, discern what God is asking of you, what God's calling you to. Right? So ask, try, try to figure out what brings you joy, what the world needs, and what other people tell you you're good at. Right? Because sometimes we, we assume we're good at something, and in fact, other people are like, no, no, there's this other thing. Uh, so those are the, the things that we are, uh, are doing for our Lenten Challenge. And as I said, you have some resources uh, that you can pick up on the, the way out. Um, additionally, the, uh, Lent, the Fellowship, our, our online newsletter is available um, on Facebook, on the website, uh, on, via email if you get our email. So please uh, read through that. Um, additionally, head down that hallway after worship at some point and check out our bulletin board. Uh, among other things, we have uh, celebrations of various sorts, but also the views from the pews. So we ask a question every couple of weeks. And folks respond to it. So see what people are saying about that that thing. Um, additionally, you'll notice we have food up here against the altar. So we're doing an Easter food drive. So that's listed in the yellow uh, yellow insert here. And the, you know, part of the reason we put it here in worship, and this is something I talked with a bunch of clergy about yesterday uh, when they came up here to look at our sanctuary, is that. We really think that St. Augustine is right when he says that Holy Communion is the commerce of the city of God, that as we receive Holy Communion, we then are transformed to be more generous ourselves, right? So there's this, this sort of cycle that, that happens when we receive Holy Communion, the generosity of God, we then in turn become more generous ourselves. Then finally, uh, Easter flowers. Next week is the last week to sign up for Easter flowers. So please, uh, please do so um, sooner rather than later so we can get that all sorted out um, for the sake of the forest. Any other announcements that I've, uh, I've forgotten? We'll be inviting uh, Michelle up midway through the service, so after the, the hymn of the day, to welcome you as a, a new member. So that's an exciting thing. I think that's it. Would that please rise for the confession of forgiveness? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against 
you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by that authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you 
not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of, eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave to some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made one cloth for themselves. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God.
comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourselves down, yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus replied to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendors. And he said to him, All these I will give to you if you fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated at this time. I've asked the young and the young at heart to lend me their ears. God loves you. God, God loves you too. So today I want to share a story. Now it's a story that's really old. In fact, it's two different versions of similar stories. They're told by various Greek thinkers and authors. Now they're about mermaids, so you're going to have to bear with me, right? So there was a ship. That, that there was the, this ship that would go by this, this rock that was filled with mermaids. Not very nice mermaids, though, but instead ones that would draw the sailors into the ocean and they would drown. Oh no, right? That's not good. So, one ship, one, one captain said, I know how we're going to get through this. We're going to take wax and put it in our ears. And that way we won't hear. We will not hear. The, the song of these, these mermaids. So they go by. They can't hear the song, so they manage to get by. It's, it's tough. They can hear it a little bit, but they're, they're able to make it. Okay. And that's, a, that's one way that they can get by these mermaids. But there's another ship captain who had a different idea. He found the man who sung the most beautiful song in all of Greece. And he brought him on board. And as they got close to that, 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 uh, that, that rock where the, the mermaids were singing, the man started to sing a more beautiful song. And it was so beautiful that the sailors listened to that song instead of listening to the song that would lead them to their death. And here's the cool thing. Christians throughout the ages have said, oh my goodness, well that's a pagan myth and that's not our thing. It's a useful way to think about how we ought to do ministry, how we ought to tell the gospel, and how we ought to interact with cultures different than our own. That on one hand, we can just ignore them completely. Oh, right? I heard nothing. Or we can understand what is good and right and beautiful in them and sing the Christian song in that way, in such a way that people can hear it. And in that way, the Christians themselves will be hearing that song instead of hopping into the ocean. So all I want you guys to think about a little bit today is that I hope and I pray that we can sing a more beautiful song as Christians. That we can tell our story in a way that's worth telling that it's worth hearing, that it's compelling and moves people in their spirit. That we can tell our story, and our story is a because therefore story. Because God loves us, therefore we are moved to all kinds of good and great things. Because one of the dangers is in our culture, and in every culture all around, there is also a story of if then, if you do this one thing, then you can get a reward, that kind of thing. Right? And instead, it always starts with God already loves us as the starting part. Because God loves us, therefore, we are a beloved community. 
we are moved to works of service and generosity. All these things that the church does at its best are done because God has first loved us. So with that, let us pray. Lord God, thank you that you never abandon us, that at our best we can tell a story that is beautiful and moving and loving and generous and kind. Lord, please give us imaginative minds to tell those stories in ways that our neighbors can hear and we ourselves can hear more fully. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And this time I would invite the young and the young at heart to head out for Sunday school. Yeah. Grace, peace, and mercy to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord our Savior, and our friend. Amen. So on Ash Wednesday, we considered our Lenten disciplines, right? I've talked a little bit about it in a variety of ways, but I, on Wednesday, we touched upon the fine line between right religious practice and practicing our religion as a, in a hypocritical way. Practice instead of projection, a kingdom folk focus versus self-righteousness, religion that comes from a place of integrity instead of from dis-ease, practice grounded in God's grace instead of our works. And it's that last one that I'd like to emphasize again today. All that we do, especially in this season of intense religious doings, ought to be a response to God a response to the reality that God acts first. Our life as religious people, and more particularly our life as Christians, tell a story about God. As it is said, be careful how you live your life. You may be the only Bible some people ever read. And so, how we practice Lent and how we live our whole lives ought to tell the truth about God. There are many stories that are if-then stories, ultimately false stories about God's relationship with the world. But ours, the story we tell in words and deeds, are because therefore stories, not if-then stories when Christians do that kind of thing where we're getting off track, but instead because therefore stories. Because therefore stories. Let us pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord God, may the preacher decrease that you might increase. Amen. In today's Gospel, we read about two competing stories, the devil's if-then story and Jesus' because-therefore story. In the devil's story, the if-then story that is tempting Jesus, it is the, that Jesus has to earn his sonship, that Jesus' heavenly Father will only acknowledge that relationship if, if you transform stones to bread, then you are God's son. If you tempt angels by throwing yourselves up, yourself off a high point, then I will be your father. If you conquer the world by whatever means necessary, even worshiping the devil, then my inheritance is yours. Right? If then kind of relationship, if then kind of story. If then was a common story in Jesus' day, a world weighed down by Roman rules, so many of which were if then rules. If you support the emperor, then you get bread and circuses. If you do what you're told, then a Roman legion won't wipe you out. If you declare Caesar, 
is Lord, then you will have peace. Right? That, that in fact, you can read the temptations of Jesus as the nuts and bolts of the Roman Empire. And this story, if then stories, are also stories that we still tell this day. They still have resonance in our own world. If you work hard, then you'll get ahead. If your child gets into college, then everything will be fine. If you give the mother your wallet, then he won't stab you. If, if, if. Right, all of these are contingent relationships. But Jesus tells a different story, another story. Jesus tells a better story in Matthew's Gospel. He tells a because therefore story. Because he is the Son of God, therefore, as we'll see, he will feed 5,000, 4,000, and the 12 at the table, as we'll celebrate on Monday, Thursday. Feed them with the bread of life. Because he is God's beloved son, therefore he will reach the heights by preaching the Sermon on the Mount, be transformed on the Mount of Transfiguration, die on Mount Calvary. Because he is God's heir, therefore he will teach prayers and tell parables about heaven's kingdom, and that kingdom shall have no end. So too our Lenten practice, they can tell something of God and God's story, this because therefore story. We, when we collect alms, we do so not saying, if you are deserving, then I'll give you this food, this money, this whatever. No, because God has created all, all that is, seen and unseen, and I am a steward of that goodness, Therefore, I gladly share of it as I am able. When we pray, we are not saying, if I say this one particular prayer in this one particular right way, then God will do what I want God to do. No. Because God is our loving parent, therefore we can come to God with all of our needs and shortcomings, praises and thanksgivings. When we fast, we are not saying, if I abstain from this or that, then I'm righteous. No. Because God is a relational and reconciling God, therefore, I can avoid things that wreck relationships. Or, consider the three practices I'm encouraging all of you to do this season of Lent. Conversation, reading, and discernment. When we have God conversations, we are not saying, if I talk to people about Jesus, then they'll fill the pews and become leaders in this congregation. Though if that happens, praise be to God, right? No. Because God's Spirit is already active in the world and continues to go on ahead of us and with our neighbors, even when the church isn't looking or following, Therefore, we can learn what the Spirit is up to among our neighbors and join in those activities. When we read the Bible, deep or wide, we are not saying, if I read enough of this book, then I'll be an excellent pe person. Though that sometimes does happen. No. Because God has a long history of being faithful to God's people, therefore, we get to read about it and see more clearly how God continues to be faithful to us today. When we discern God's calling on our life, we are not saying, if I find a sweet spot between joy, competency, and need, then everything's going to work out. Though hopefully we'll, we'll be nudged towards a more purposeful direction in our life. No. Because God has made us who we are in this time, this place, and this community, therefore we get to explore how the roles and relationships we have can be good and very good, can be a blessing to all those. May this Lent and our practice of it tell God's story. 
be a response to God's continued love and care for this world, each and every one of you, and our neighbors near and far. Amen. <laughs> so happy that you're joining us. We uh, look forward to two years of fellowship and friendship and all that, that comes along with being, being a part of this, the community of Christ in this community of Christ. Thank you, everyone. Now please rise today and we confess the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Light, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten now of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of power. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, <clears throat> let 
let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You alone are God. Sustain your church in times of wilderness. Give vision and wisdom to bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with the ministry of administration. Counsel all to faithfully lead your people into the free future. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create verdant gardens and expansive deserts. Tend to the needs of every living creature. Bless those who work in fields and orchards, that the world is nourished by the fruits of their labor. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You know our temptation. Sustain those who govern and legislate. Instill in them a sense of your justice and righteousness, that equity and peace would pervade all the regions and nations of the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Protect those serving in the military, especially Sammy, Daniel, Joshua, Marshall, Nicholas, Cooper, Justin, and Devin. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are a hiding place for all in distress. Draw near to exiles and accompany all refugees and immigrants, especially children who travel alone. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, surround your people with your steadfast love, especially Bill, Satuko, Walter, Paul, Russ, Robbie, Sean, Jeremiah, Lance, Pat, Bonnie, Erwin, and Larry. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You offer abundance to all. Bless the ministries of hospitality in this place. Care for those who tend to the needs of others, especially worship leaders, coffee hour hosts, and nursery attendants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed in every age. Unite our prayers with theirs until our wilderness journey is complete and we rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior.
we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen.